my outlook. Uh, so let me repeat that uh, even if you think it's of no practical importance, it is really like at the end of the 19th century, there are, definitely are, inconsistencies, um, incompleteness in the existing theories of physics, in the standard model of particle physics, and also in general relativity. And they all are somehow related to what happens at short distances, to space and time, what happens to, uh, to the singularities in quantum field theory and how can these, um, how can these be resolved? And, uh, well, I would say that, uh, you know, there are various ideas about this, uh, like dissolving point-like interactions to extended objects, uh, that's string theory. Maybe there's one theory where all these infinities miraculously cancel, at least there's one, um, well, quantum field theory, well, no, I shouldn't say this, but, but there's a certainly a candidate, maybe any crusade supergravity, where this could still happen. So far, no divergence has been found, up to five loops. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, I'm old enough to worry about such questions. You know, uh, will I live to see the answer or not? And I think in this case, I probably will not see the answer, we will not see will not know in 30 years whether theory is finite to all orders or not. Or is it some fundamental discreteness? So it's not space-time, but space-time atoms of some kind. Of, of some kind. This is the road taken by loop quantum gravity and also discrete approaches, which I haven't talked about. Uh, there's something, well, that's again my seminar tomorrow. But in any case, I think uh, it's a long way to go. And I think... Uh, you know, we are in need of another Einstein. Because what Einstein did, at the, at, at, in the early 20th century, they had these problems with, um, you know, self-energy of the electron and so on, and people cooked up extremely complicated mathematical schemes to explain uh, why the, you know, what happens to the self-energy of the electron and they knew about the Lorentz transformations, but, but then they invented mechanical models with the ether and, you know, just to make sense of this. And, you know, Einstein really cut through a Gordic knot. He said, uh, he said you know, it's, you know he, he thought about things in a conceptually extremely simple way. And I think this is what we need to do. I mean, if you look at modern papers in loop quantum gravity or string theory, Take the latest uh, model, standard model constructions with F theory, you will first of all be struck by, you know, the immensely complicated mathematics. And I read these papers and I say, well, you know, there should be a simpler way, if it's the true answer, there should be a simpler way to at least see why this is the right idea. Just like Einstein, to start with, you know, this initial observation, was simply he saw someone, or dreamed about someone falling from the roof, and he said, ah, gosh, he falls from the roof. While he's falling, he doesn't sense any gravitational force. And this led him to the idea that, ah, gravitational force has something to do with frames of reference and uh, accelerated frames of reference and space and time. So this, you know, thinking about things in very simple ways. And this is, this is something that's completely lacking from from our approaches at this point. So I would like to close with this. You know, it's, it's really a challenge. It's not like um, at the end of the, I mean, it's just like, it's very analogous. It's not true that we are at the end of physics. It's, it's rather that the problems are so complicated that, uh, you know, maybe some young person will have the bright idea to you know, see, see through all this and see the simple core of, of this future theory of quantum gravity. Thank you.